Good evening and welcome to the Advanced Pathways Family Academy webinar. My name is Ronnie Shoa and I am the Supervisor for Communications and Engagement at WJCC Schools. Tonight we have Ms. Jessica Walter, the Director of School Counseling and College and Career Readiness, Dr. Ann Colorado, the Coordinator for Gifted Education and Talent Development, and as our moderator, Ms. Elena Trott, Supervisor of Organizational Development and Equity. This presentation will provide information on long-term planning for middle and high school students and share the many opportunities available to take higher level courses and participate in advanced programs at WJCC schools. It's important to note that this is a different presentation than the one that you will hear next week at the WJCC curriculum fair. Additionally, if you have any, any new topics that you would like the Family Academy to cover in the future, please visit wjccschools.org engage and submit your suggestion or idea. We're always looking for ways to enrich, support, and empower families by providing resources that allow you to become a stronger advocate for your students' education. Well, good evening. Our plan for tonight is to talk to parents and students about viewing advanced course and program planning through a talent development lens, share information about advanced coursework and programs in WJCC that are available to virtually all students, and direct you toward various resources that are available to support your child and increase access to advanced courses and programs. Any talk about advanced courses and opportunities should start within a framework of talent development. We want students to connect themselves to schools in order to take advantage of all the opportunities that schools offer. One way to connect themselves to school is to take a talent development approach. What are the things I already like and am good at? And how can school help me develop those talents? The true purpose of school is to develop the talents of students so that they are college, career, or military ready when they graduate. And every student has a talent. The talent development process certainly begins in kindergarten. But middle school is where students first get the chance to start choosing some of their classes. So we recommend that parents have a conversation with their rising sixth or seventh grader and ask him or her, what do you like? Kind of come up with some things that they have a list of that they like and why do they like those things? And then what are they good at? list the things that they're good at and how do they know that they are good at them and then what courses might match up to these strengths you can review the program of studies with your child which just went live a day or so ago this is a primary resource to use when looking for the different advanced courses available in wjcc the program of studies also describes a lot of the programs and opportunities that we will touch on during this presentation and we'll make sure that you have a link to the program of studies by the end of this presentation. In addition, talking to parents, teachers and counselors are fabulous ways for um, students to learn about opportunities and courses. And lastly, they can use the internet and do research and to career paths and what other kinds of courses might match up to their likes and interests. We'll reference many other resources for you throughout the rest of the presentation. At the end of the night, we will let you know where you can access a recording of this presentation and the links provided in it. So you may be wondering how you know what your ta what talent areas your child might have. There are several ways that parents can help their children figure out what they like, what they're good at, and what courses in WJCC might match up to that. First, you can use simple observation. I like to call it being a talent scout. Think about your child's characteristics. Do they ask lots of questions? Do they like to take things apart? Do they like to fix or build things? Do they read all the time? Do they remember little details? Do they like to create stories? Do they like to argue? Those are all things that can give you hints at 
what your child might be good at. You can also use student data that teachers and schools provide. You have report cards with comments and grades. You often get testing reports from SOL score, uh, test scores um, or IXL in the classroom, which is a math or reading program, um, SOL growth data. And you also talk to teachers through parent teacher conferences or teacher notes. So you can get a lot of information about your child and what they might have strength areas in from those sources. Lastly, there's some general tools available to parents and, and students. One of them is the Virginia Department of Education's post-secondary opportunities webpage, where you can read of all the different um, post-secondary, which is um, after high school, things that kids can do one day. And it gives them ideas of what they can do in high school and middle school to get ready for that. You also will start formal meetings with your school counselors in seventh grade and can meet with them at any time when you're younger. But in seventh and eighth grade, students start developing academic and career plans. So that will be a really great resource for parents and students to um, match up school to students' talent areas. Of course, the Williamsburg James City County Program of Studies, as was already mentioned. And then there's a new program available to families this year called School Links. It's our academic and career planning platform in WJCC. And all students in grades 6 through 12 are provided with a personalized account to which their parent or guardian also receives account access to. This platform allows students to explore interests, find and learn about careers that align with their interests, and help students in developing academic plans that align with their goals. As you will see, WJCC has many advanced opportunities available to all students. But if parents and students aren't aware of them at early ages, then it will be more challenging to plan for them later. For example, many advanced courses have prerequisite courses, so students must plan out these courses far ahead of time to make sure they have taken what they need to take in order to take what they want to take one day. Another example of this is that some of the high school programs available for advanced learners award extra points on their applications for students who took advantage of higher level coursework and opportunities in middle school. The more you and your students know in the fifth and sixth grades, even though it seems really early, the better off your child will be when planning for advanced courses and programs. So what are the advanced courses and programs available to WJCC students in middle school and high school? In middle school, there are a variety of courses available to students who show a strength in English and or math. World language courses are also available for students who are strong in English and have an interest in learning a new language. School counselors and teachers can recommend students for honors level English courses and the pre-algebra 6-7 course based on their strong data, such as grades, SOL scores, IXL scores, teacher recommendations, and others. However, it's important to note that parents can request these courses for their child as well. <clears throat> Student data is also used to place students in Algebra 1 in 7th or 8th grade, though parents may request acceleration testing through the secondary math department if their student does not automatically place into Algebra 1. Students who take Algebra 1 in 7th grade will move on to Geometry in 8th grade. On a quick side note, any student who would like to apply for a regional governor school for science and technology in high school must take Algebra 1 by the eighth grade. And for one of the strands offered there, they ideally must take geometry in the eighth grade. As for world languages, students can choose from French, Spanish, German, or Latin at most middle schools. In seventh grade, they take the first half of World Language 1 and in eighth grade, they take the second half. There's also an option to start the language at level one in eighth grade. Please note that any high school course taken in middle school actually counts on the student's high school transcript and begins the student's high school GPA or grade point average. 
Students might not want to take a high school course in middle school unless they are prepared to study and work hard in these classes. Lastly, we offer several different career and technical education courses at the middle school level that will prepare students for advanced CTE opportunities or New Horizons programs in high school. These courses are related to engineering, technology, and business. We'd like to point out that vocational technical education in high school is not what it used to be when many of us were in high school. There's an application for each of the career programs that require a strong grade point average and strong attendance. New Horizons prepares students to step right into high paying careers after high school graduation. In fact, a high number of students from CTE programs also go on to college instead of the workforce right away. We'll talk more about CTE courses when we look at high school. <laughs> There are several there are advanced. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. There are several advanced opportunities for students in middle school as well. Our gifted program is a K through 12 program. Students identified as gifted in middle school take gifted level classes for English and history. Parents interested in the gifted program can learn more about it on our website, and the link is included in this presentation. Um, we also have math acceleration, as mentioned, um, that can occur in middle school. School counselors and teachers can recommend students for math acceleration based on strong student data, such as grades, SOL scores, IXL scores, teacher recommendations, and other data points. However, parents can request acceleration testing for their child as well. We've also included a link to the math acceleration webpage here. The Governor's School for Science and Technology, though, um, as Ms. Walter mentioned, is a high school program, it actually can start in middle school for the preparation. So it is an extremely competitive application process for 10th graders and accepted students attend the school for 11th and 12th grade. Planning for students interested in our regional Governor's School begins in middle school. You can use the links we provided here to sign up for the pre-admission series through the Governor's School for Science and Technology um, as seventh grade families, um, as well as their college planning information newsletter. Ms. Walter. Additional opportunities in middle school include extracurricular activities through your child's school. The list we are sharing here tonight is a sample of these opportunities and not an exhaustive list. Middle schools offer activities and extracurriculars such as National Junior Honor Society, Model UN, Forensics, Robotics and Coding Clubs, in addition to many other clubs and teams. Participation in activities such as these help students develop leadership skills which can transcend learning environments for students. You can visit your school's website to see a full list of what is currently offered in, in that middle school. <clears throat> Additionally, there are extracurricular activities outside of the schools that students may find rewarding that also build interpersonal and leadership skills for students. A sample of some of those parent provided experiences are enrichment courses, camps for academics or fine arts, scouts, talent performances, volunteering, or other team activities. Many extracurricular opportunities cost money, but many of those offer scholarships. Moving on to high school, you can see that we have many offerings for advanced courses in all content areas. And I believe, Ms. Walter, um, you're going to pick up that one. I'm sorry. That's okay. We'd like to point out that advanced placement courses or AP courses, dual enrollment courses, and CTE courses offer ways to earn college credit and or credentials that prepare students to be hired in high paying careers right out of high school. With the high cost of college, Anything students can do in high school to help pay for college can be beneficial in the long run for students. Honors level English courses are offered in grades nine through 12, as well as for earth science and biology in the sciences. Advanced placement, again, commonly known as AP, courses are an option for students beginning in the 10th grade of high school. Through AP courses, students have the potential to earn college credit depending upon what their score is on the AP exam and which college they attend. Colleges and universities determine the score for each AP exam offered 
that they will award an associated course credit for to the student. Dual enrollment courses are available in English and Health Sciences for students. The English course will typically be taken in the senior year, but there are situations where it may be an option during the junior year. CTE courses are available throughout high school and offer an opportunity, the opportunity for students to earn an industry credential, explore interests, and build their workplace skills. A sample of the course offerings within CTE include veterinary science, health and medical science courses, and engineering courses. In high school, students also have the option to take an independent study course or participate in a work-based learning experience, such as an internship as an 11th or 12th grader. These experiences allow students to further research their interests or gain hands-on experience in a career field of interest for them. There are many advanced opportunities at, for students at the high school level. As mentioned, our gifted program is K through 12. So students identified as gifted in high school take gifted level classes for English and history in grades nine and 10, then typically transition to AP or dual enrollment courses for 11th and 12th grade. Parents interested in the gifted program can learn more about it on our website. As mentioned, our regional governor school serves highly advanced math and science students in grades 11 and 12. Students apply in the spring of their 10th grade year. Prerequisites for the governor school include biology, chemistry, and either algebra two trig or pre-calculus by the end of 10th grade. The link to the governor school for science and technology website will also be included at the end of the presentation. In the senior year of high school, students have the opportunity to participate in the early college program through Virginia Peninsula Community College, or formerly Thomas Nelson Community College. Students apply for early college during the spring of their junior year, and once accepted, will complete all remaining qu required coursework for graduation by the end of the first semester of senior year. And then they will attend college classes on campus at VPCC for the second semester. The Governor's Early College Scholar Program allows eligible high school students to earn at least 15 hours of college credit while completing the requirements for an advanced studies diploma. Program participants sign an agreement for the program and those that meet the terms of the agreement receive a certificate of recognition from the Governor. The WJCC Honors Program allows students to take advantage of the extensive AP offerings available to them and complete challenging, self-designed community service and honors projects. Once again, you can see that several of these programs leverage the ability to earn college credits as high schoolers, thus helping to pay for college in high school. Once you know your child's strengths and talent areas, you can learn about the different programs that could help further develop them. It's better to know the requirements of these programs when your child is younger as well, so you can ensure that you encourage him or her to take the pre, excuse me, prerequisite courses and participate in the best experiences available to help him or her be a competitive applicant. There are a few other opportunities we would like to share tonight as well. Williamsburg James City County also participates in the summer residential governor schools which are one month residencies on a college campus. Programs include visual and performing arts, humanities, agriculture, math and STEM, engineering, marine science, and world language immersion academies. The application process is also highly competitive and information for the application can be included of as far back as the eighth grade. Summer residential governor school opportunities are only available for rising 11th and 12th graders. As similarly shared in the middle school section, high school students have the opportunity to participate in many school extracurricular activities. The sample of those activities you see on the screen tonight, again, is not an exhaustive list and may, be, may not be available at every high school. Each high school and middle school shares the lists of clubs and teams on their school website, and I encourage you to review this information when you can. In high school, students also have the opportunity to earn diploma seals in a variety of areas as seen here on the screen. 
The complete list of diploma seals and requirements for each seal is available to you through the program of studies. Students and families could also choose to participate in extracurricular activities outside of school in high school as well. A sampling of these family provided opportunities is available on the screen and is similar to those shared related to middle school. A lot of specialized programs within the application processes that you want to keep track of, excuse me, will want you to keep track of the number of hours you spent on the activity and if you have received any honors or awards for those activities. Keeping track of activities even back to the eighth grade can help you apply for opportunities when you learn about them and will get you ready for the college and career application process. Our online academic and career planning platform, School Links, which was previously mentioned, does allow students to maintain this information in their personalized accounts. Let's briefly review what we've talked about tonight to give you a great start on the path to advanced coursework and opportunities. We've reviewed that a talent inventory of likes and strengths for your child is important. The importance of matching up talent to course offerings available in WJCC. The importance of knowing the requirements for these opportunities and the importance of the student academic and career plan and talking with your child's school counselor throughout this process. The last thing you should do is, excuse me, the last thing your child should do is to show up, work hard, and get involved. Becoming involved in clubs and activities at school not only helps to build leadership skills, but also helps students feel more connected to their school and community, which can support academic success. Attending school regularly is not only important for students' academic progress, but also their social growth and experience in school. Teachers, administrators, and counselors are all on your team to help you support your children with their goals. We truly hope that you found this presentation helpful so you can better support your child in pursuit of excellence through challenging courses and opportunities in WJCC. Before we move to the brief question and answer part of the webinar, we'd like to remind you that our annual course planning and curriculum fair nights are next week, Wednesday, January 18th for high schoolers and Thursday, January 19th for middle schoolers. Both fairs will be held from 530 to 730 at Warhill High School. As mentioned, the information at the course planning and curriculum fair nights will be different from what we shared tonight. Thank you so much, Jessica and Anne. At this time, we'll move into the Q&A portion of our webinar. So thank you to those who submitted questions when you registered in advance. Luckily, we were able to answer most of those throughout our presentation. If you have questions you would like to submit to our presenters at this time, you can use the Q&A feature in the bottom toolbar on your screen, and we'll get to as many of those questions as we can with the remaining time allotted. Um, a couple of the starter questions that we got in advance, though, um, would be, what if my child doesn't do well in advanced courses? What would be the recourse for that? Would you like me to answer that one? Sure. Okay. So um, all students will have an adjustment period when taking an advanced course for the first time. So don't give up right away is our advice. Uh, contact the teacher as soon as you notice that your child might be struggling a bit in the advanced class. The teacher can provide guidance to you on how to best support the child and can even author, offer other types of support in class. We recommend that your child take all of the advice from his or her teacher and gives his or her best effort for the entire first period of the, mark, of the school year before deciding to move out of the advanced class. Taking advanced classes in the content areas that he or she is strong in will also help your child to do well in that class. Okay, our next question. Will advanced courses help my child get into college or get a scholarship? Ms. Walter, can, do you want to do that sure. one? Sure. Advanced classes in high school can help your child get into college and get scholarships. The important part with that is it's important that the student does well in those classes. So it's about matching um, the right level of course for a student. Poor grades and advanced classes will not help um, the student towards getting that scholarship or, or their college application. 
Okay, we've got one more that was submitted in advance. Are programs consistent between schools such that if uh, a family were to move from one school to another, would the programming remain consistent? Do you want to handle that also, Ms. Walter? Because sure, I think you mentioned it. Yeah. Um, so for what we offer in one building, we offer in other buildings um, as long as, as a course made. So if it's a, a program such as Gifted, that is in all of our buildings. Um, but if it's a specific course, um, it does require enough student interest in the course registration process um, for a course to what we call make. So if a, if a not enough students in one building uh, requested a course, we aren't able to offer it and staff every single course that we have available, just those with the high interest. Okay, we've got some more coming in. So let's start with um, for students who do a uh, test kind of average on standardized tests, but excel in the classroom, how heavily do SOL test scores weight compared to teacher recommendation, report card grades, and a parent request in trying to place a student in honors level classes? So oh, I'll tackle that one if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, really, when looking in middle school, where this comes into um, consideration is is more heavily in the math area when it comes to English that is a part of the course registration process and and any parent who would like to see their child in an honors level English class can can go ahead and enroll them in that and SOL course or excuse me an SOL score is not a, a barrier to that the SOL score is just one component of looking at the whole child so that teacher recommendation and what they see in the classroom um, throughout the school year is also, of course, very important. And we look at student performance in the class and understand that the SOL is, is one, one test in one day um, and students have a full year in a course with a teacher and material. And so that, of course, is taken into um, heavy consideration. Okay, we've had a couple questions about the curriculum planning night, a uh, curriculum night that's coming up uh, very soon this month. So one is, if you're an eighth grader this year, which curriculum planning night do you attend, the middle school or the high school one? That's a great question. So the curriculum planning nights are developed for rising students. So whatever court, whatever grade level you'll be in the next year. So current eighth graders should attend the, should attend the high school night. So that high school night is for rising ninth through 12th grade students. Um, and current fifth graders should attend the middle school night. So it's for rising sixth through eighth. And we do have separate um, counselor led parent and student sessions during those nights. One for six on the middle school night, we'll have one for rising sixth graders because there's a lot of new information um, for those families that we also include into that. And then we'll have a separate one um, for rising seventh through eighth. And then again, on the high school night, we have one for rising ninth graders and a separate uh, session for rising 10th through 12th. Okay, we have a couple questions about world languages. Um, if my child wants to take a language that's not offered at the zone school, is virtual Virginia an option? Could you clarify what grade level? Um, doesn't say, sorry. <laughs> so um, virtual Virginia is a resource that we do use heavily with our high school students um, because of the structure of the program. Um, and, and how it's offered. It is not typically something um, that we utilize with middle school learners. Um, so we do work hard to try to meet the world language needs of our students. But again, we go back to that enrollment requests, which is the same for world language as it is for fine arts or CTE or any other electives that we have. Um, student interest is essential in being able to build that master schedule that we have each year and staff our classes. Okay, sticking with the world languages, um, for a rising sixth grader who already has a, 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 a foreign language fluency, world language fluency, maybe because it's spoken in the home, what are possibilities for that student to go into a year two language? And we don't start language until seventh grade, correct? Correct. We start language in seventh grade. Um, we would work with those students individually to identify um, what specific path or plan would be best uh, for them as, as that can be a very specific question. Um, and some students, we would have varied answers based on um, the, the student abilities at that time. 
Okay. Um, let's see. We have a question. Is Governor School for the Arts an option? Dr. Colorado, I know you know more about those programs. Right. That is not in our region. Our regional governor school is the science and technology school. The governor school for the arts is down in Norfolk. So that's um, that's a different region for the governor schools. OK, and keeping with that, if they do go to the one that's in our region, the governor school in our region, what's the expectation for transportation? Mm. So we provide transportation um, from uh central location in the morning and then the students would catch the bus at that place or Jessica did it did they start picking up at the high schools now I can't remember in the morning I apologize I don't know the answer to that question okay. I'd have to find out yeah I can verify it but but what I think we do is the students meet at a central location their parents bring them to a central location and they catch the bus the bus brings them to the governor's school waits for them and then brings them back to the central location and they get on separate buses to each of the high schools and go to their high school um, during lunchtime they're there by lunchtime so they can eat lunch so our um, wjcc goes to the governor's school in the morning so they catch that bus really early like by 6 30 um, and they're there by 7 10 when class starts and then they come home come back for lunch and do their afternoon classes at their zoned high school all right could you also speak to how the gifted or honors level courses in middle school and high school are set up um, do they have a separate class do they get pulled out how does that how do how are those services provided mm -hmm. in middle school for students identified gifted in the verbal areas which would be social studies and english they are cluster grouped together for the most part although sometimes they are blended classes with honors and gifted together so that depends on the number of gifted students at that grade level in that middle school and staffing and that kind of thing but we do have an articulated um, curriculum that extends the core curriculum for language arts and high school, I mean, and history for those gifted students. So if a child is currently in the fifth grade gifted program, what does, is there a difference when they move into the sixth grade? Um, a difference in the classes, they'll just take the gifted English class at sixth grade and the gifted history class. So that's the new thing that's added because we don't have a separate history gifted class in fifth grade. And then for math, the students take whatever math would be next for their path. Okay. And let's see, we've got a few more coming in. Um, so a student does not have to be identified as gifted to be recommended for the honors courses. Is that correct? No, that's correct. Don't. I mean, that's correct. <laughs> they don't have to be. Okay, great. Um, can a student participate in both governor school and honors classes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We and have I a believe, lot. Sorry, go ahead. No, that's fine. I'll say mine and you say yours. We have a lot of the students who take um, AP classes when they get back to their home school after that. And morning. that's the same for students who go to governor's school and would like to be a part of the honors program, the WJCC honors program, they they can do both. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, can you explain more about the diploma uh, seals and, you know, what kind of impact that has? Is it more attractive to colleges if students have those seals or what would be a benefit? So diploma seals are recognition for student work throughout high school. Um, colleges don't always know about diploma seals because they aren't finalized until the end of the student's senior year, um, which at that point, uh, college acceptances have been distributed by the colleges. And that's because some of the components and requirements for those diploma seals have senior, senior year requirements. So we aren't able to determine um, if a student has achieved that until uh, much later in the senior year. Okay, I've got three questions kind of asking the same thing. So let me let me see if I can summarize them together. I think the overarching question is, what's the difference between gifted and honors? Um, is there a difference between gifted and accelerated math? Um, and the other part that's kind of tied into that is, um, the curriculum, the difference between gifted social studies and then general social studies. So do you want to talk about a difference in the curriculum and, and those learning experiences? 
Sure. Um, the honors and gifted curriculum in middle and high school through the 10th grade is really um, taking the core at into a higher level. So we'll use um, resource curriculum resources that were designed for gifted students and um, kind of overlay it and integrate it into what um, our core curriculum is. Um, we try to get kids to do as much uh, real world problem solving and project creation as, as possible. Um, just things are maybe at a little higher reading level, a little more sophisticated writing requirements, that kind of a thing. That's sort of the differences um, between honors and gifted, although a lot of the gifted materials or, or course readings from some of the curriculum units that we use are also available to honors teachers to use with kids in their class who need it. So um, very similar structure to honors and gifted. Um, I'm trying to remember what the next question was. The same would be true for the history, the core history. And then we um, overlay some more inquiry based readings and um, activities into the gifted um, level history courses in um, middle school. And then there was a third one. I think the one in math. between. Accelerating oh, for math. So say it again. It was the difference. There's no gifted math. It's just accelerated. Right, right. right. At, at this point right now, um, the math is just accelerated to the next level of math. Um, we are working on um, enhancing the curriculum for all of the math courses. So there are gifted pieces in that for our students who have advanced. And our um, middle school teachers who are teaching the gifted sections, are they required to have additional certification or training? They are required by the state to have training, period. So we in WJCC um, provide annual training for all of our teachers that would cover any teacher who has gifted children in their class. And then we offer um, more coursework um, in our for our own developed courses for called cluster teacher training that our teachers are um, encouraged to take so that they have additional training for those um, gifted classes. And then we have a lot of other like mini courses that we've offered. And then we do a lot of collaboration with our teams of teachers to just do little mini trainings on strategies. So yes, they are required to have some training and we've tried to um, really beef up our training from the division level for our teachers. For families who have transferred into the division or perhaps their child just didn't start off on that accelerated math pathway, is there any opportunity for them to catch up or double up on math courses? So for middle school students, we do have the accelerated um, testing option where, and we can visit, excuse me, you all can visit the secondary math uh, website um, on WJCC site in order to read more about that process and request that your child be tested for next school year. Um, that option allows students to take a test to see if they can place into um, a different level of math during middle school. Um, really, once we get to high school, there are prerequisites that students must meet to go to the next level of math. Um, and so we'd have to work individually with the student to develop a plan to get them to the math level that they would want to get to, um, which can it can happen. And um, sometimes it just might mean either summer programming or um, looking at some of our outside options as far as online courses or things like that to um, meet the student's needs when they transfer in. Okay. And and can I just add about, um, we do have a new um, math, a compacted math six, seven course this year. So I know there are a lot of rising sixth graders who um, maybe did not take math six as a fifth grader. And this would be an opportunity to start an advanced track in sixth grade. And so those students who do very well in the math six, seven course, which is two courses put together and they take the math seven SOL at the end of it, um, would then, if they do well in there, could do algebra one in seventh grade and geometry in eighth grade. So that really does help our rising sixth graders. Um, and then working with your school counselor will help you figure out the math pathways. All right, we just have a few moments left. Um, let me see if we can. Um, can you talk a little bit about parents who um, would like to request gifted testing uh, where that happens, whether they're transferring into the district or um, perhaps their child didn't qualify before 
what what would be the the process for that? So um, you will start getting re, uh, the referral new uh, blurb is what I call it. Um, by the end of January, that will go out to all the principals and on our websites. Uh, Mr. Shoa helps us with all of that, and so we have our open referral period for parents and community members, teachers, um, any anybody who wants to refer a child to gifted can do that between um, the middle uh, the last two weeks of February. I think it's the 13th through the 28th or the 14th through the 28th this year. And so we'll accept those referrals. Um, and so you would con you'll get uh, links in that um, newsletter communication from your school principal or our website. And um, we can accept that referral and permission for testing. It usually, um, it can take up to 90 days because it's a long process and there's a lot of different pieces that need to fall into place. So um, that process starts pretty soon. All right, a couple more questions about the fair next, uh, I guess is it next week after, it mm -hmm. is next week. Okay, exactly. so next week. All right, so they should bring their babies with them to the curriculum. Yes, please. But, okay. um, I can give you a little little um, description of what the curriculum fair will entail. Um, and it's really an awesome opportunity for both students and parents to attend. We will have tables or booths um, from every content area that, so for at the middle school, we'll have one for every content area that will be, um, there will be middle school teachers who teach in that content area there and can answer all of your questions. You'll be able to see things like sample, um, projects or learn more about the curriculum and what your child will be learning. Um, and if you have really specific or if you have content specific questions, the content specialist will be there, the teachers will be there and they can certainly help you answer those. We'll also um, have those sessions for um, parents and students that I mentioned earlier about that, the whole course scheduling process and what to expect in middle school when you're a rising sixth grader. Um, and for those who may not be able to make it, we do have recordings um, that we have used and we will be, that will be posted on our WJCC YouTube page. And there'll be a link from our, our main division website um, that can give you descriptions of the different courses and what you might learn. Um, we have also had recordings of the um, parent sessions with counselors um, that are available to be viewed um, through that web, the YouTube page as well. And speaking of recordings, uh, the recording for this particular webinar will be posted on the WJCC YouTube channel, as well as the Family Academy webpage from, um, from the school division's main website, <clears throat> and uh, copies of the slide deck so you can access I'm sorry, those hyperlinks um, will also be available to you so you can click and go exploring and learn more about all of these incredible opportunities that are available to our students. I think the main point tonight is that we have something for everyone. Um, the main thing is wanting to know what are your child's relative strengths? What are they great at? What are they passionate about? Um, and then let's um, choose courses and pathways that are going to help emphasize that, that strengths-based approach um, to get them where their passion and their purpose is after they graduate from us down the road. And I know that's hard to hear, talking about graduation with your fifth grader, um, but it, it is, I promise you, I have two adult children and, and it goes by so fast. We have a couple questions that were still in the Q&A and um, if we didn't get a chance to answer those questions in the Q&A, we have your contact information because you registered with us um, electronically and our team will be reaching out to you within the next few days to answer those remaining questions that we didn't get to answer live today. Um, so again, within next week sometime, we will have the recording posted for you, um, and you can go back and reference, and you can certainly contact uh, Mrs. Walter or Dr. Colorado if you have some follow-up questions, but I think my, my suggestion would be hold those questions and bring them to the curriculum fair. We want to see you in person um, at that fair, and I know the team members there will be able to answer those questions for you. And so, I'll and have so a table we'll there, there as so, well. Yeah, we'll be there. <laughs> Awesome. So thank you for attending tonight's webinar and your feedback is really important to us, as uh, Ronnie said at the beginning introduction. Um, and so you will be receiving a survey from us uh, within the next 
hour. Um, so if you can give us your feedback on um, your learning, the learning intentions, and if you were able to gather some fresh information from us tonight, and what Family Academy webinar topics would you like to see in the future? We want to hear from you, and we want to make sure that we're meeting the needs of our families um, throughout the school year. So thank you. Take care and uh, be safe if you're out and about tonight and um, have a great uh, weekend. Take care.